Ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folk, we have returned. This is the first episode of Season 5 of my stupid fed. Fresh off of a pretty decent Defy the Gods, we're building up to cutting edge. Got a lot of new people coming. Hope you all enjoy the draft we're beginning with. A triple threat. Uh, with former AVW Heavyweight Champion King Roddy, Tyson Webb, and Hero Ramirez. Sorry for my burp. I am very excited. Um, it's just good to be back. <sighs> Excuse me. I feel like I should have taken a longer break after this fire the gods, but who cares? Here comes the pimp. The king of the pimps, the pimp of the kings. The man of the people, King Roddy. Roddy, Roddy. I did feel bad that he was essentially a transitional champion. <laughs> because he immediately fucking lost it to Chris Edwards. Speaking of though, Chris Edwards did become the first person to have held world championships in both feds. Not in both feds, in both um, brands. So I do take pride in that. Anyway, here comes Tyson Webb. And in an interesting bookend, the main event of AVW will be Tommy Fenn versus Christian Montez. And if you remember anything about them, uh, Tyson and Tommy actually had a match at Defy the Gods and a feud sort of going into it, which Fenn won. Anyway, Tyson has skull face paint. <laughs> oh shit, I just remembered. Spent the entire weekend doing this. You would have think you would have thought I would have remembered it. I've got all the bloody supers, supers, the signatures and finishes, the bloody supers. Sorry, I'm just excited for Street Fighter Six. That's why my mind is. Anyway, here are Mirrors, former PBW World Champ, former PBW International Champ, main evented to fight the Gods Three, one and over the top rumble. One more of attrition. The dude's pretty much fucking done it all. So yeah, I like Hero of Mirrors. I think he's pretty sick.
say it happens. I mean, you, you're really not late because we're just starting the first match of the night, so if anything, you're early. Well, right on time. If um, Otis from Sex Education has taught me anything, it's that on time is late. Which is a great show. I wonder when season four is coming. Backbreaker from Tyson. Focuses on Ramirez now. And you have to imagine, this would be a huge confidence booster if Tyson's able to beat two former world champs. Oh! Oh god! He just fucking cleared King Roddy right off the rope there. You really do. Sex Education is such a good show. I was hesitant on watching it, but my, uh, my mom recommended it to me because she's a huge fan. Um, I've had a really good friend who was also a co-booker, Dobby. He's a really big fan of the show. It's a great show. The direction especially is phenomenal, as is the writing. And the acting too, obviously. There's not there's not a dull cast member in the entire thing. It's all great. Anyway. Good suplex from King Roddy. This is the stomp. Good counter from Ramirez. And... Oh! Beautiful lucha things. Tyson gets a baseball bat. Great splash. Tyson breaks up the pin. Got a hero up. Looks around with him on his shoulder. Oh, that was almost right into the bat, I think. Great backbreaker there. Turns his attention back to Hero. Tyson is firing on all cylinders right now. He's not missed an opportunity. Oh, fuck, almost landing against the turnbuckle. Jesus. What an elbow drop. X kick from Roddy. Great counter, but good series of counters actually between Roddy and Tyson. Oh, there, Ramirez taking it to the king. Take it to the pimp. Oh, who's he going for in this one? It's calling Tyson up. <laughs> I like to think that King Roddy was taking the piss out of Hero. <laughs> Good double suplex. Uh, oh, head scissor DDT. And Hero might be thinking, Hero's landing. There it is. One, two. No! Get him. Just called because it was bugging me. Okay. See, I wouldn't mind so much if it were just for like important things or if you just get like, you know, a DM or someone tags you in something. But when it's for literally everything, that's where I draw the line. So I just never have the sound on. Anyway. Oh, 
Oh, hard kick there. Brody breaking up the pin. And Ramirez showing a bit more vicious though than I'm used to seeing from him. New fee for gaming. So, oh, nice. I was never so much into the FIFA games. I mean, I'm, I've been to a few actual football games. I like the FIFA Street series though, weirdly enough. I don't know why. I haven't played one in a while, but I've got a fondness for those games. I, I guess part of me is like, sports games I don't like, but when it's something a bit more unconventional or tries to do something new with it, that's why I have appreciation for. Like, racing games are all the bloody same to me, but if you give me a racing game where you can crash into cars or shoot guns at cars, I'm in all day. Oh, goodness. Great German suplex there. Hard kick to Thompson as well. Hard elbow. Working on the leg. And working on the leg again. Oh, Tyson, you fool. Oh, ladder. And hits King Ruddy right across the face with it. And then just puts the ladder down. Again, the least useful thing in a regular Extreme Rules match, but, you know. Throws Ruddy right into the steps. And is Hero going to go for a weapon? No. Oh, I thought he was going to leap at the turnbuckle. Damn it. That would have been so cool if he just decided to do that. Grabs his arm. Good lucha things indeed. Down to the top. Hero's landing. Tyson was Tyson was literally right there, dude. Although the fact that he leaped over him to get the move was kinda of sick. Elbow, a punch, I think that's just a punch, and this splash. So it works, slam. Oh my god, hits him with the fucking, what's it called? Judgment Day, two, three. I have the moves written down, I just had to scroll to find it. That's a pretty sick opener though. Like for the first match back, that was really good. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I need to actually like listen to that song. Because you've been trying to get me to listen to it, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> Next up, Kira Shibata versus another former heavyweight champion, Ryan Quinn.
Now, Akira technically made his debut on Defy the Gods in the opening battle royal and actually made it to the halfway point before being thrown out. And that match was, of course, eventually won by the twat Mr. X. The wrestler, the wrestler character is, is a twat, not the person himself. The person himself is pretty cool. Anyway. Here comes Hero. Hero Ramirez? Why the phone? Now, this is Akira Shibata. Very different person, Jake. Learn your wrestlers. Learn their names. You're not Vince McMahon. You don't need to change them. <coughs> anyway. That was a really quick entrance. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Kirish Potter. I think he's pretty cool so far from what I've seen. Speaking of cool, the guy who thinks he's cool, but he's not. <laughs> is former Navy WWE champion. There's a very good chance that if the game didn't fuck up the order of the Hot Environment Chamber, as it always does, he probably would have entered last and he probably would have won. If I remember right, didn't Roddy beat Quinn last to win the belt? I'm gonna look that up really quick. He did last beat Ryan Quinn, I was correct. Anyway, uh, back to this match, Quinn just kicked Akira right to the outside. So trading back and forth. The neck breaker from Quinn. Oh, stomping him on the heat. Throws him right into the cor into the corner, into the steps. I know what steps are. They're a, they're a pop group. Just hooked Sakira right into the into the apron. And oh. Every time I see that move done that close to the steps, it always looks like the other person's head bangs off the side of the steps. It always looks like the most painful thing. Ryan running back into the ring. And Akira doing the same. Good hot shot. And, oh, what a shooting star. Fucking shame at Mandan, seriously. I'm good with it.
And that was the Wildcard's Revenge. The Wildcard himself has the chair now. It's just funny that a Japanese badass wrestler has the Shane McMahon default dance. Ah, the tranquilo pose. I'll always love it. Oh, oh! I can't even bust it open. Chair shot right in the back of the head. Kira's hair being styled the way it is, it's very difficult to make it where the code is. I go on the right side? I think it's above the right eye. Very odd still. But still, we we got blood on an AVW show and I couldn't be happy because we don't get that often enough in AVW. You know, the hardcore brand. With the weapons and the craziness and whatnot. And Quinn resetting the non-existent counts. Quinn shot. That might be it. One, two, three. Damn it. Oh, in fact, the Quinn shot does kill all. Boo! Yes. He took a fucking steel chair shot to the back of the head and he still managed to survive for a bit. So one thing I'll give both you creative wrestlers actually, they can take a lot of punishment before they go down. Anyway, speaking of a lot of punishments, <laughs> Evil Dead versus yet another former world champion. In fact, the most recent former world champion, Grateri. And... I feel like Evil Dead is just going to eat Grateri. But in case he does, um, I, I want to... I want to explain that live cannibalism is not allowed on my shows. The man's got a frickin' chainsaw. Which he never uses. Well, could you imagine an Extreme Rules based uh, wrestling video game where you could use chainsaws and power tools and cutlery and shit like that? I imagine the sick Nick Monzo would just be the head of that project. You say what you will about the backyard wrestling games, they were fucking awful. But they were like the purest form of garbage hardcore wrestling. And you got to play as Andrew WK, so that's not a bad thing. But then again, Insane Clown Posse were also playable, so... You know what, I retract my previous statements.
Anyway, here comes Grateri, former world champ. Also one of my favorite wrestlers going. To become world champ in the first place, he overcame five other men in an incredible ladder match. He went on a great run and was voted my wrestler of the year of season five. Of season four, excuse me. But will he be able to beat someone who's at least as tall as five men? Hopefully. for a brain crush really early and that's what Kratero's going to do he's got to use his speed his nippy biffiness oh what a fucking lariat <laughs> I did not expect him to turn evil dead inside out with that what the hell oh oh I misses the job Great front drop kick there. Rateri oh, with the knee. Turns it around. Great hangman's neck breaker. Going up top. Frog splash. Beautiful work. Shout out to the late, great Eddie Guerrero and the Moonsault. Shout out to every wrestler still doing the Moonsault today. Which is 90% of them. Two count off that! Bloody hell. And Ruteri going for the weapon, going for the biggest weapon he can find. Actually, a very smart choice. Oh! And setting it up. Hammerlock DDT. Oh, I think that was the Galante Crush where he landed. But he went for the Martinetta to Reyes and Evil Dead countered. Was that the Galante Crush or the Trainer Del Fuego? I think it was Del Fuego. I don't know. Anyway, headbutt. Oh, baseball bat right to the legs of Grateri. That was the going to crush it. They got it right. Two. One. Two. Terry's been hit pretty hard, but he's the one still standing. Another frog splash. That has Grateri up. Just drops him right in the turnbuckle. And oh no. Oh god. Massive first drop. One. That was just a one count. I thought you were was going to go to the top again. right to the back of the skull. And he's 
got the chair set up in the corner. I wonder if, like all other times that's been done, the chair won't actually be used. Oh, what a counter from Guterri. Good dragon screw there. He goes to the outside. Kendo stick. Not a chance to use it though. Just fucking hooks him to the outside. Clipping that, what the actual hell? Taking some moves there. Oh. Evil Dead with the horror one. One, two, no. Jam shots right to the top of the dome. Get him something I didn't really see what to. No, Evil Dead just about kicks out. This match has been insanely good. <laughs> Like, I was not expecting this match to go this hard. Oh, so as I say that though, the Death Driver. One, two, three, no! How? Why? Glorious tornado DDT. And the whole oh. What is this match? Great cancer for him, evil dead. Oh, in front of the horror bomb. Of course that puts him away. What the hell? That match was way, way better than it should have been. That dragon run to the outside was beautiful. I have no problem with the match ending there because holy hell. Oh, he hit him with the dagger's end as well. I didn't even see that. Pretty good win for Evil Dead, former world champion just beat, in a surprisingly big banger. Like, that match was just mental, in all the best ways. Anyway, next up we've got... Valkyrie...
versus Deanna Crow versus the debuting Lily Tox versus the returning Ruby Schuyler. And yes, Ruby Schuyler has the to go to Kai current hairstyle because Kara, the creator of Ruby Schuyler and so many other awesome female cores, is a huge to go to Kai fan. Like, they love to go to Kai so much. Uh, thank you, Jack Napier. And a happy Tuesday to you too. Here comes my silly wrestling lady, Diana Crow. Uh, my day's been pretty good. A little bit cold because the weather in the UK right now is kind of crap. But I've been having a good day. This is my uh, first stream after Defy the Gods 4. And it's been a pretty good stream so far. All the matches so far have actually been pretty good. That match between Gatari and the Dead before this was insane. My god. I was going to look something up and I can't remember what it was now. It was like a funny sort of thing. It really narrows it down, I know. Um, you could. I don't have any room right now, I'm afraid. Like, my, my roster is actually literally full up. Woo! Woo! Anyway, here's the debuting Lily Tox making her first appearance in my fed. Of course, that's what debut implies. So, you know, do that what you will. I like I like those skeleton hangers a lot. I understand that, but I don't have room for you. I've got a full roster, I, I can't really change that. There's no one I can really think of to get rid of to make room for you. I'm bringing in a bunch of new people. So, I'm, I'm sorry. I would, but I uh, my hands are full at the moment.
Anyway, completely did not get the chance to talk about Valkyrie at all. Formula was champion, Formula was champion as well. She's pretty sick. And here comes Ruby Skyler. Also a former women's champion. One of the most accomplished people I've ever had. Making her debut for AVW. I don't think she was in PBW before then. Sorry, I don't think she was in AVW before this. She was in PBW. Pardon me. Sienna going after Valkyrie. What's else for both these women? The stomps to Ruby Skyler, the Randy Orton style stomps. Stomping over and over again is Lily. With knee to the body. Then only Ruby kicks out. But that's all well and good, but I can't take a character in right now. I, I do not have the room. For which I am sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. Anyway, Lily and Valkyrie, the two last women in the ring. Great arm ring of flip and kick to the back there from Ruby. Oh, what's Lily going for? Drop kick didn't even look like it landed. Oh, Rose thrown. It's Ruby Skyler. <laughs> that was a bit awkward, but uh, Valkyrie eventually brought that up. And Lily has a Kendo stick in play. Tiana focused on Ruby. Oh, Hamlock DDT. One, two. Lily kicks out. Oh, what a counter from Valkyrie, although. Murder of Crow! Lily Tox immediately breaks it up. Throws Lily right out of the ring. Oh, right into that boot! One, two, no. Oh! Sledgehammer shot! And the German suplex right onto the sledgehammer. Random pan on Lily. Deanna getting Sledgehammer back. Focused on Ruby, it seems. Michinoka Driver. J 
jumping side kick. Valkyrie doing a great job of keeping Lily pinned. Well, so to speak. Sledge, oh, so, no, not Sledge, I'm a baseball bat. That baseball bat. I know what I'm for. And Lily going for the guillotine joke, it's just called. I thought it had like a fancy name, but uh, no. Great dragon screw there. Luckily breaks up that pin attempt. Talks with a big win. Not even with like a signature or a finisher, that was just a straight up suplex. There's a German suplex, one of the match. A good win for the debuting star as well. There we go. Sorry, I was just making sure to ban that person who just showed up in case they started fucking spamming me. About their wrestler, I won't be able to take them in. Because I repeatedly said no and they repeatedly said yes, you should. And I was like, alright, nah, can't deal with that bullshit. Anyway. Next up we got Potentia Trium versus the No El Train. And this match should be absolutely stacked. I don't have a desk to karate chop. Well, I, I've got my coffee table thing. Um, but I don't want to karate chop it because it used to be my nan's. It's been in our family for a long time. And I really like it. And here come Amber Young and Liza Horror, two thirds of Potentia Trium. Right, <laughs> Pardon me. These two be good.
Speaking of people who'd be good, here come the now I'll train former women's tag champs. And I like these two. They're pretty great. Good start with the chops over and over. Oh, amazing suplex there. Looked like Quinn landed a bit awkwardly on her knees. Very early pen. Be young after a good beat down there. Tags in Liza Horror. Oh, one from Fist Drop that waited too long. Quinn easily go out of the way. Great Shining Wizard there from Liza. Posing against Noel Park, throws her into the corner. Tree of Woe position, it looks like. Great counter from Noel Park. Elevated flatliner there. And tucking sent on so I love that variant of the sent on so much. It always looks so good. One, just one. Look for an armbar though. Oh, the double team attack there with Liza joining in. Hold on, Noah Holly can go around against both women now. Great answer from Liza, holy hell. Stomps over and over. Great kick catch by Noah Park. Blew it hard shots over and over. Repeatedly mounting and landing palm stripes, tags and Liza. Another good jumping sidekick there from Liza. Drop down. And Liza might be looking for horror from above. Gets it.
Queen breaks that up. Got there really, really quick. Queen thrown to the outside. I think Liza might be setting up the Blood Moon. There it is. Wow, potentially a tree made that little shit look easy. Holy hell. I can't be the only one who thought that match would go on a bit longer. <laughs> Please, I've I've got one of the best women's tag divisions in EFET history. Please don't let season five be the one where it dips in quality. <laughs> that would be cool if all three members of Potential Friend could win on the same night. And I would love it if Morgan made it look as easy as Amber and Loiza did just now. That would be pretty awesome. Anyway, your main events of if you do half of the show. Tommy Fenn versus Christian Montes. As we know, Tommy Fenn has the best named uh, finishers. Because his one win Angel is called Ground Control to Mage Tom. His other finisher, I don't remember what move it is exactly, but its name is Clock Anderson. It's a brain buster. Okay, now I know. Oh, I fucking get it. I get the reference. Oh, what? Because he was one of the brain bus. I get it now. Anyway, here's Tommy Fan with his fancy ass looking new attire, I will admit. I love the Roy the Lightning shirt. Having listened to all of Metallica's albums, I would say Roy the Lightning is probably my second favourite album. Uh, first is definitely Master of Puppets. Really, no. least favourite, and I think everyone's least favourite album, not just by Metallica, but, but by possibly any metal band, is Saint Anger. That album can die, please. Like, that album is just so bad. <laughs> and how was it such a misfire? They were trying to cash in on the new metal trends, and they fucked up so egregiously. And it took them so long to recover their career after that. Ugh, anyway. Seriously, how do, how do you miss a home run like that? Anyway. Oh no! I really wish more people would actually bother with actual fucking Trons. Especially considering that I spent one of the days over the weekend um, actually going through all my tag teams and giving them Trons. So I'd avoid shit like the WWE logo. Oh yeah, it's Chris. Making his debut in the AEW main event, no less.
Is this the X-Pac entrance? I think it is. Anyway, here we go. Last match of AVW for tonight. Ben with a strong start. Oh, O'Connor Roll suplex. Beautiful stuff. That's one of my favorite suplex variants, too. I mean, it might take a bit long, but the payoff is really good, and I love the build. It always looks so smooth, too. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do a bad O'Connor roll suplex. I miss that it was Chad Gamble's finisher as well. Anyway, a couple of gorilla press slams from Big Sven. Big Sven, I almost said. Yes, this very large man who is supposed to be from America. Created by my Australian friend. And probably my best friend in Ethers. His name's Sven, yeah. Oh, beautiful Rana there from Montez. And a triangle trip again, but amazing counter from Tommy. And Tommy Fan with a squash match essentially made that look easy. I did like they decided against using the chair at the end and then put Montez away uh, with the uh, combination of the Tommy gun and then I have to sing it. Ground control to Major Tom. And like that, Fan wins. You know what? Most of that card was pretty fucking solid. I say matches were a little bit deflating, but every other match was pretty good.
And that's it for the AVW half. I will see you. I also agree with her natural. The pair of bomb uh, counter looks. It looks great. I'll see you in a few minutes for the PBW half. Stay tuned.